You're listening to Parasearch Radio. News, views and reviews from the world of the paranormal from across the UK and beyond. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web. The views and opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch Radio or their affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to Haunted Histories with your host, Penny G. Morgan, right here on Parasearch UK Radio. Good evening, everybody. How are we? I hope we're doing well on this October Wednesday evening. Just a week and a bit to go before our gorgeous Halloween. What has everyone got planned? Let me know. Put something in the chat room. Tell me what you're doing. I'm I'm not going to be around. I'm away that week. So um, hopefully it means I won't have to deal with trick-or-treaters and I can get to eat all the sugar and chocolate and sweets myself. That would be nice, wouldn't it? And then I can roll myself out of the house because I'll look like something out of, I don't know, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, most likely. But anyway, on a serious note, I hope I do hope everyone is well. I hope you've got lots going on for yourselves at the moment. I'm still on a bit of a, shall we say, a quiet sabbatical from doing anything, this darned ankle of mine. See, it doesn't stop me doing this show because I get to sit down and... Um, don't have to move around too much as you can probably imagine but uh, it is putting the kibosh shall we say on my investigating but I am sure I will get back to it soon and as I like I've said for the last couple of weeks it does mean I get to do loads of writing which is always always a good thing well is for those people who like what I write I guess <laughs> So where was I this weekend? Well, you probably saw the photos and hopefully you heard the show that I did with um, my evil queen, Madame Greenaway, on Monday night. And um, (laughs) I've just seen the comment in the chat room. I think I know who's sending that, Captain Snort. Um, Have you kicked Guy Gibson off the... um, off the uh, Spreaker account, is that what it is? Is that why it's Captain Snort of Pippin Fort? Very good. And is it really a fort or is it a readout? Or is it a battery? Who knows? Some kind of fortification. So it's an in-joke between myself and Richard Clements um, of a feeling... Of a... <laughs> he's, he's on one. He's on one. Hi, SJ. Thanks for joining us. Anyway, so this last weekend I was at the um, the relaunch of a book that anyone probably born in the 70s and early 80s would have would have would have read the uh, Osborne Ghost of Book Book of Ghosts sorry Ghost of Books Book of Ghosts I'm not drinking really Book of Ghosts it was a such a fun evening such a fun evening I I I really enjoyed myself and I I was sitting at a table with um I had uh, the the lovely Lucy Wilgress writer as well and Haunted Magazine writer on one side of me who we discovered we had a hell of a lot in common which was quite weird and then next to her were Kerry and Hazel from Haunted Happenings and then on the other side of me was our fellow Parasearch bods Neil Packer and Jane Rowley and I can honestly say I I haven't laughed that much in ages it was just constant constant jovi- jovialness it was definitely what was needed definitely what was needed but like I say I've not got much going on the rest of this year as it stands I'm having to put everything on hold until I know I can stand up for six hours <sighs> such is the life such is the life anyway tonight's show tonight's show we're going to be talking about Coombe Abbey so I'm not going to ramble on because I'm sure you want to hear what um what Barry had to say now I will I will confirm this is a recording because Barry was due to be working tonight but you might see him pop up in the chat room. I don't know because the poor guy's come down with man flu. He was he was in Germany at the week last weekend. I think it was doing some functions. And he'll tell you all about it. But he's come down to the dreaded aeroplane lurgy that we all get when we've been flying somewhere. So, but this is a recording, and um, there is also a bit of a technical glitch about fourteen minutes in. But don't worry, it comes back. But anyway, let's get the recording played out for you. So, as I told you, my guest tonight is um, a, a lovely friend of mine 
Um, I met him for the first time actually at Sage Paracon last November, and some of you may remember the live videos we did where I made him stand three steps lower than me on the stairs so that I wasn't actually talking basically into his belly button. It's the wonderful Mr. Barry John. <laughs> How are you doing, Big Baz? <laughs> Big Baz, I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful, thank you. And you know what? It's great to come on and support you and be here for you. I, I love it. I really do. Oh, but I'm doing good, you. really good. Just back from Germany. Yeah, you've been. Ch- what have you been? What were you doing over? Was it? Were you near Cologne? Did you say? No, I was just no. outside Hanover. Hanover, that's a, it. Yeah, a, a spiritual convention over there, or a congress, as they call them. So it was fantastic. You know, 200 people over the weekend, and you know, a nice event. Really, was a nice event. It's, it's interesting that you were near Hanover. That might link into what I'm going to mention a bit shortly. Mm, okay. Ooh, there you go. That's got you thinking, isn't it? That's got Definitely, you thinking. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's and have a look where we're going to go. <laughs> I know, I know. I hadn't even planned that one. It's just off off, off the cuff. I've just thought of that. So, um, oh. yeah, it's just, you know, ad, ad hocking, ad libbing, and all that malarkey. So. We're talking about Coombe Abbey, and I know your mm. your Abbey that you're more, um, should we say, au fait with, yeah. is is New Newstead, Newstead yes. Abbey. Um, and if I sort of link it in a bit with Newstead, obviously that this that part of the world, the Midlands, if you like, the, I call it the more scenic Midlands. I'll probably get shot yeah. by anyone who's from the non scenic Midlands for saying that, but the more scenic Mid- the North Midlands, I suppose. You'd, would you call it the North or the South Midlands? Uh, do you know what? I think I think it, we normally call it like the East Midlands. The East but, Midlands, you know, okay. It's, yeah, it's one of those, isn't it? It's in the middle of nowhere because we're on the border of Yorkshire. Mm. You know, some people call it North Nottinghamshire. I think it's a real sort of fine line, really, yeah. in terms of it. But the whole sort of Nottinghamshire, Warwickshire, Leicestershire area mm. itself was quite prolific for abbeys yeah. and and those kind of grand yeah. grand structures. And as we know with Newstead, it was an abbey until Henry VIII came along and decided that he didn't religion was only good if they paid homage to him and he you know he sold it off and it became a country home didn't it Newstead yeah Yeah, it did it did yeah very much so and you see where we are we're in the middle of of what was the royal hunting ground Mm. you know you're in the middle of Sherwood Forest so Mm. you know everybody kings and queens used to come to the area and and obviously come hunting that was the whole idea of it Mm. you know so these these priors these monks you know whichever you wish to call them um you know they were there to, to entertain royalty as well, you know, and provide that 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 bed for the night. Let's mm. call it that. Which is very similar to the place we're talking about, Coombe Abbey. Mm. Because do you see? See what I did there? Do you see what I did there? Do you Brilliant. see my segue in? Hey, not just really a pretty clever. face, Mister John. I'm not just a pretty face. <laughs> anyway, so Coombe Abbey. Obviously, most people will know Coombe Abbey as being the venue for Sage Paracon. It was last year. It will be again this year and for those of you who haven't read my blog on it I am referring gonna sort of go back to some of the stuff I wrote in my article that I wrote for the Parasearch website not so long ago those of you who had read my blog there is going to be extra stuff that I've researched since so don't worry too much um but it was an old abbey Coombe Coombe, as the title Mm. would suggest was an old abbey and they actually believe it was the most powerful and rich abbey in the whole of Warwickshire. How does that compare then to Newstead as an abbey? From well, I think an affluence point of view. I mean, certainly in terms of size of the building, you know, I mean, it's 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 just unbelievable. I mean, the first moment that you walk through, um, you know, into Coombe Abbey through the front door, the place really does take your breath away. And not just yeah. from a hotel perspective, but the size of the whole estate, you know, mm. because... This this really was very impressive. I mean, compared to Newstead, I mean, Newstead isn't anything on the size of Coombe Abbey. Um, so, you know, and, and everything in there has got a little bit of history in terms of Coombe Abbey. You know, the whole size of the building, when we use the outbuildings, um, walking around the place, you know, you get this, this real sort of grandeur feeling, whereas Newstead is, to me, is more compact. Right. You know, it's a lot smaller on basis. So, okay. you know... Um, at Newstead we had what 12 to 15 what was referred to as black cannons or Augustinian uh, uh, cannons you know um, and they resided there and that that was their home so the Mm. place wasn't huge compared to Coombe Coombe 
Coombe shows you money. It shows you value. It shows yeah. you work when you look at it. Yeah. And even the bit where, you know, you, you're walking down and you go over almost like over the little bridge over the moat, as I call it, mm. where then you go into the forecourt, you know, into the entrance area. And it's just amazing. It really is. You know, it's mm. it's not one of those feelings that oh, you, you know that it was grand. Put it that way. It's kind of, I mean, pardon, oh, this is going to sound really trite, the what I'm about to say, but it has got a supernatural feeling about it as you're driving up to it. It, it kind of almost an out of work, like a th- ethereal sort of, it appears. Because I remember yeah. when, when I was driving to, I don't know that part of the world. I mean, I, I can get pretty much anywhere in the UK if I get pointed in the right direction, but I don't know that part of the world intimately. And I was driving along and suddenly my sat nav's telling me, it's on your right. And I'm looking, thinking, can't see anything, can't see anything. And I saw this driveway, it was telling me to go down. And you're driving down, and you do feel like you've been driving down that driveway for quite a while, and then it appears. Mm. And it's almost like someone's just clicked their fingers and it's appeared. It's a, it's, I can't really explain it any, any more than that. Yeah. It, but it's sunny. And, and I remember, it's, fortunately, there was no one behind me. But I'm driving in and I'm slowing right down before I pulled into the car park, just sitting yeah. there going, wow. Because yeah. it, it does have that... I mean, I, I would have said as a, when it was an abbey as well, it must have had a similar sense of sort of grandeur and... Um, gravitas well, so, as you, you yeah, turn up I mean, to it c- certainly certainly you know I mean and you're right you know because I mean you know I, I, that was the first time I ever went to it last year Coombe Abbey you know and I remember doing the same as you and you're driving down this road and you're thinking well we're just in we're just in a load of trees and yeah. woods you know and things yeah. and then suddenly this house you know Abbey appears at the end of the road and you think and it takes your breath it really yeah. does and I remember you know walking up to it across from the car park over the bridge and yet I actually had to stop and look and think this is just I'm just in awe of this place I did you know and, the same and thing. yeah yeah you know and then when you go through the door into what obviously is now the hotel reception you go in there and you just look and and the size everything is just phenomenal it mm. really is phenomenal you know mm. um and I was lucky I mean I had I had one of the rooms in in the old part of the house uh, in I call it a house in, yeah, in the abbey mean, and yeah. yeah you know and it, and it was amazing, you know, it really was. You could just think, you know, going up this big staircase, going up into the rooms, mm. and it was just outstanding, it really was. Mm. No, I, I did, I mean, it's like I say in the article I wrote, I did actually go, wow, as I was walking, you know, as I got out of the car and started walking towards it. And I know this, from perception, a place does get bigger the closer you get, but it did suddenly seem to just grow, and, and mm. it was like, wow. I, I, I I was thinking I've got to get in I'm supposed to be meeting with MJ to start to <laughs> check what she wants me to do for the day for power research but part of me just wanted to go walk about and just walk and touch the stone yeah. and, and and absorb it and ah, mm. oh, it's it. I mean people probably think I'm being paid to be this sort of um, excited about a building but anyone who knows me knows that when I find a building that blows me my mind away I can't stop talking about it. So even then, I was thinking, I can't. This could sound really crude. I can't wait to get in the in them in it. I yeah, can't wait to yeah. sort of feel what it feels like inside because it felt it feels like it's alive when you look yeah. at it. That's it. that's another thing I felt like it almost was watching you. It, mm. You know those paintings you get that no matter the, the, the artist <laughs> does them so that whatever angle you look at them at, you think you're being watched. Yeah, you, you know feel the, the eyes sort of, moving. Yeah, that's yeah. how I feel about Coombe Abbey when I was standing outside it. Yeah. I felt it was watching me, and I, people are probably going, "Penny, you, you, you drink? Are you drinking? Are you you forgot your meds? No, seriously, that that is how it felt, and I know I wasn't the only person who felt like that." Um, so t- talking about it as a as a monastery, one of the the first one of the the should we say um, hauntings that mm-hmm. most people talk about there is of a monk who is seen and is meant to cause a bit of chaos in what is now the kitchens by throwing stuff and touching people and being seen to rush up the corridor and and everything else had you heard of that story i had yeah i yeah. had heard of that and you know yeah i mean I, I love i love some of these old classic stories because what you find sometimes is that when you look into them there's never actually been any sort of proof behind it you know there's no sort of real evidence in terms mm. of it and you know, let's say, let's just say this classic scenario. You know, you're in a, you're in a, an abbey, or what's the first thing that's going to haunt it? A monk. <laughs> you know, and it's like, okay, yeah, all right. But yeah, I'd heard that story, and I'd heard of things being thrown and and 
you know, messed about with, etc. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I'm like you. I want to see the proof of it. You know, I'd want to go in there and go, right, come on, then. If you're there, I want to see you do this now. Well, there is credibility to what might be a pissed off monk being there. Mm. And and that credibility is a lot of people have attributed this particular haunting to one Abbot Jeffrey, who was actually mur- they say was murdered. So me being me, I decided to go on a search of the abbots of the co- the Abbey, um, yeah. and I found the sort of British Historical Society type stuff. That the benefit of whenever you're investigating or researching stuff to do with the abbeys is the record keeping is not bad. Because of the mm, fact that monks were pretty much the only literate people mm. around in that time, probably before the sort of mid eighteen hundreds, if I'm honest, yes. and and you know that that they would have written things down, things would have been documented, and and whilst it's only you know one person's perspective, the notes are there. And there mm. was an abbot Geoffrey who was murdered in 1345. No one was ever brought to heel for it, but it, apparently the murder was so well, heinous, heinous, however you want to pronounce it, or so savage, okay. that the then king, Edward the Third, actually, and this is documented as well, I, ain't, I, I mean, I, I read the translation, but the ancient document, like shot, um, I suppose, screenshots of it, you can actually see, I think it's in the National Archives, actually ordered six justices to investigate, six justices from different counties to investigate who had slain Geoffrey. Okay. What had happened? Now, so there is some kind of credence to that story that there would be a, an annoyed monk throwing things yeah. at people. Because, to be honest, if I was running an abbey and I'd been murdered, I'd probably be pretty annoyed too. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, I think I would be as well, yeah. And I think, I think you'd do your best to let people know, wouldn't you? Exactly, exactly. But I also found stories of some of the monks actually... Um, Shall we say Henry VIII's men didn't treat them too kindly? Mm. So maybe it could be one of them. Anyone who had a grudge against people occupying what was their place of worship. Yeah, yeah. And also their home, you know, remembering it was a yeah. home to them, wasn't yeah. it? So, you know, it, it's. I, I totally agree with you, yeah. And it, it came, made me. I was, I was talking to my husband about it when we were. Actually, when we were driving up to Leicestershire this weekend. And, and and I was talking to him about it and, and I said one of the things that sort of I find quite frustrating is when there's a haunting without any sort of I mean we can never prove it we can't we don't you know we, it is all speculative at the end of the day most of it there's, yeah. you can you can speculate a bit stronger than others but it's still speculation you know it's like when everyone says they've seen Anne Boleyn how do they know it is Anne it could have been one of her ladies in waiting they would have been dressed not that dissimilarly they would have walked in a similar way um, their hair would have been styled in a similar way because it was the fashion of the time but everyone always assumes it's like when people see um, a, a, what they think is a blonde starlet oh it's got to be Marilyn Monroe you know it, yeah. they, they won't so could it be that it could be that this annoyed monk is the late abbot but it could also be it was just a monk who happened to to, to live and well maybe die there totally, totally yeah could have died a natural death. Could have could have just disappeared due to a natural death. You know, it, you've got no idea, have you, really? And I think a lot of the time, we you know, we can make it. We can almost make the story fit if we're not careful. You can, yeah. You can shoehorn it. You in. know, mm. yeah, you can, you can. And I think, but you know, I think when you start looking at it, you know, people want to hold on to that little bit of history, don't they? Onto that little bit of information. Yeah. And go right. Well, there certainly is something in this and take it from there you know um, yeah. and I think the more let's say the more gory or more spooky the story is the better in a way mm. but all good ghost stories have to have a monk let's be honest oh gosh yeah all the time <laughs> so so that that one Jeffrey could it could be Jeffrey it's plausible hello okay sorry about that They're a little little bit of a, a technical technical glitch um barry needs to go and put another 50p in the meter to keep his internet working <laughs> barry you should have loaded the meter up before we started i know my fault my fault i apologize <laughs> i apologize but but yeah i mean we, you know i mean it was in, what we were talking about wasn't it that you know 
it's more fascinating for people when it's got a bit of a gory story yeah. to it. You know, yeah. the murder of a monk by, let's make it up, Henry, Henry VIII or whatever, um, you know, has more of a story to it than a monk that just died of illness. Exactly, of old age or, or whatever yeah. it was. But like I say, that, that is plausible. I mean, there was a lot of violence to the monks and everything during the Reformation. And um, because because the fact some of the, um, should we say, soldiers that were sent out were probably basically akin to thugs, as yeah. it was. So it is plausible it could be one of them. It could just be one, as you say, who lived and worked and died there. Totally. And is aggrieved that there's other people coming into his house. Who yeah. knows? Or yeah. it could be Jeffrey. We yeah, don't know. Totally. I know. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah. go on. Yeah, and you, I know, you, you see, we find this, I find this up at the Abbey, you know, you'd think the first place that that would be there, or the first person would be would be one of the priors of the Abbey, mm. but it's not always the case. Mm. It's not always the case, is it? And sometimes it's the unobvious things that, that tend to happen, so I agree with you, you know, but I think, you know, having that little bit of gore to it, you know, that little bit of mystery, mm. you almost go, blimey, yeah, that must be real then. Mm. The thing is, though, especially as Abbot Geoffrey died in 1345, don't tend to get that many hauntings that go that far back, <laughs> well, do we? Well, again, no, I mean, without it, being without being sarcastic, I, I'm, yeah, not, I'm no. not trying to be sort of um, disrespectful to anyone who does investigation. Gosh, I do it myself. Mm. But most of the stories and the reports you read are more likely to have been things that have happened in the last 200 250 years because it's it's like I think it was when I was on Paul Ross's radio show and he said why don't we get dinosaurs why don't we get Neanderthal man yeah and it's like yeah. it's true actually we don't we don't we tend to not report much post about 17 1750 but then mm. You know, is is that is it different because it's a hotel and it's constantly got loads of energy coming through it with all the guests? Who I think knows? I think it's a real difficult one, isn't it? And I, and I agree with you. You know, there's certain things that happens in buildings, and you think, well, why don't we get them coming back talking to us? You know, why is it that? I mean, as you know, where I live in in the middle of Nottinghamshire, we've got Presswell Crags, which mm-hmm. is you know the original sort of Stone Age caves. Mm. You know how many how many Stone Age men have we got? And, and number two, I look at that and then think, if they did come back, would they be able to communicate? Mm. How would they communicate? Yeah. You oh, know, that's a whole think, other conversation. Totally, totally. But I think you're absolutely right. You know, and I think you know also, and I've mean, seen this numerous times. When people go into buildings, sometimes they almost make up the story of a haunting yeah. or that there's somebody there waiting for them. When actually, you know what it. It, it never happened. Mm. Yeah. Well, on to uh, 100, 100 or so years later, when King oh. Edward the Fourth actually stayed at Coombe Abbey. Mm-hmm. Um, he it was under the as you as you mentioned with Newstead that that the royal royalty would come and stay at these abbeys almost like as a quasi B and B, I suppose, or posh hotel, whichever way you want to look at it. And yeah. he he was actually. Um, the hospitality of an abbot Alexander when he stayed there and what he was actually doing he was travelling to Coventry to actually have a bit of a scrap with his former friend um, Richard Neville the 16th Earl of Warwick aka Mm. the Kingmaker who at the beginning of the Wars of the Roses had been the one to get Edward on the throne and then halfway through it he changed his mind and wanted to get Edward off the throne again Um, and Ian, and I was reading up a description of what King Edward the Fourth was like, and apparently he was nearly your height. Really, was he? Apparently, so he was a bit handy as well. Um, mm. wasn't wasn't scared of a bit of a scrap either. Apparently, he was the tallest. I think they said he was the tallest um, uh, king at that point they'd ever had, or something like that. At that point, yeah, yeah, he was How meant to be six foot four, according to I the, mean, that, the archives. And that. And that is a good height in those days. That's huge. Yeah, that in those really days. is. I mean, the average I mean, that... height would have been about five foot three, five foot four. Oh, easily. Yeah. So he was certainly a giant in his time, wasn't he, for his mm. time? Okay. So he stayed there for a little while while he was travelling to Coventry. Yeah. Um, and is he, is he said to haunt it? He's not, funnily enough. Hmm. See, but, this is this is the sort of stories that I always think about. So I think hmm. you know, and that's a funny one, isn't it, when we think about it? Because you know, some of the buildings we go to that have had royal visits, you know, Mary Queen of Scots, you know, she was halfway around the country, you know, she must have lived in near enough every royal palace near enough. 
yeah. or, or was held there, let's say. Yeah. How many times does she come through? But my point exactly, exactly like I said with Anne Boleyn yeah. and Marilyn yeah. Monroe, if you want to look at a more modern day one. Yeah. It, because people know the name, they automatically assume. Um, yeah. And it's like, I know there's there's meant to be uh, one of the, the, the supposed hauntings at Warwick Castle, and people always assume it's, um, well, they assume it's the Kingmaker, Richard Neville. And and I'm like, well, well, how do you know it is? It could just be one of his, you can't see him, cause, because they raised the floor level after, sort of over the last three, four years, you only see him from sort of like hip up, you can't see his yeah. legs. And I'm sort of saying, well, it could just be it's it's one of the huntsmen, or you know, you can't assume yeah. but unless you've had a one-to-one conversation with them, you can't really yeah. assume. You can just say, well, what era they were from, or who it could be. Um, but, I mean, as we know, so much in our game is conjecture anyway. It's trying to put yeah. pieces together and come up with a, a full house. Um, but no, um, Edward is not meant to haunt Coombe, but I just thought that was an interesting fact, because... <laughs> The fact he was off to have a bit of a scrap with someone who'd originally been his best mate. Mm. Um, yeah, it, I mean that's that's interesting, isn't it? That really is interesting when you think about it, because mm. you know it, I, I look at some of the buildings I've been in over time, and you know how would we know? I mean, at the end of the day, wherever I was, Coombe Abbey, wherever, if it was a if it was a monk or a you know one of the the priors that came back, I wouldn't know who it was unless, like you said. He physically wrote his name down and said, "By the way, this is who I am." Yeah. You know, you would just get an energy. You'd just get his feeling. Yeah. Yeah. My point exactly. My mm. point exactly. So, let's jump forward a little bit to something that's reasonably relevant, seeing as it's happening in a couple of weeks. Um, bonfire night. Okay. And where bonfire night comes from? Obviously, we all know about burning the effigy of Guy Fawkes and all that kind mm. of thing. Um. But Coombe Abbey has links with that too. I heard about this one, yes. I, I told you about, about it, didn't I? I? And you were like, I didn't yes. know that. Yes. Yes, yeah. so it has links with, with Guy Fawkes too. So, brief sort of overview of what went on with the gunpowder plot. Um, and I know there's an awful lot of people who probably like to recreate it at the moment. In fact, um, <laughs> I, th- I think there's a meme going around saying Guy Fawkes, the only honest man ever to have entered the Houses of Parliament. Um... I can kind of see the point, and I do actually think Guy Fawkes is much maligned. I don't think he 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 um he wasn't the only one doing it, but for some reason he's the one that we all know about. Um, and we'll talk about what happened. Well, we have a quick conversation about what happened to him. But the background of it was that the then king was the Scottish king James the first, and he was Protestant. And but when he first came to power, he was actually quite tolerant of Catholic mm-hmm. 